For the last two episodes so far, we've been talking about the first two steps of the inductive Bible study, which are observation and interpretation. And finally, the moment you've been waiting for is step three, application. But actually, this happens to be the most neglected part. Usually people would ask, what do I see? And what does the passage mean? And a lot of times they stop there. This third step asks the question, how does it work? I'll be giving four steps on doing the application. So stay tuned. Hello people in the world, I'm Hannah of Hope and Future Bible Devotions and this channel gives you encouragement and godly wisdom with Bible context and life applications. So welcome and if you're new here and that's what you're looking for, consider subscribing. Now I'm emphasizing the importance of application here. The Bible is there to change your life. The reason we study it is not just to get smarter, but it's also to put it to practice. And in turn, we'll become wiser. Not doing so is like looking at the mirror when you wake up in the morning, seeing your messy hair, the stubble, and evidence of drool on your face, and then going straight to work. As Christians, we are called to a changed life to become Christ-like. There's a part in Luke 12, 48 that says, To whom much has been given, much will be required. So with all that said, let's go to our steps. First is know. And there are two things to know. Know the text. You already know the first two steps, observation and interpretation. And now we're going through the step of application. You have to do these steps in order so that true understanding of the text will come out. Also, know yourself. 1 Timothy 4.16 says, Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. The great thing about a Bible study is that the student of the word, that's you and me, learns first before sharing it to anyone else. And that has to be the order. When I do Bible study, sometimes it's to share to the young people. But the first thing my study does is to teach me. I look at what God's been doing in my life and what he still wants to teach me. Here's a reminder. Let's not look highly of ourselves to the point of being prideful and also let's not look down on ourselves either just be teachable and receptive next step is relate when we study the bible and the truths in it we have to relate them to our experience second corinthians 5 17 says therefore if anyone is in christ the new creation has come the old has gone the new is here we are all a new creation when we commit our lives to christ a new creation in a sense that we become a new person we are transformed now i don't have a dramatic transformation but when i came to know christ like for real as i was discipled in the word i became more intentional in becoming more like Christ. That applies to all of us, regardless of what our past was like. God wants to affect the way we live in school or work, our friendships, our dealings with people around us, our love life, and all other areas of our lives. It's called spiritual growth. Unfortunately, sometimes we don't relate what we learn in the word to our daily life. They become separate. Or there are areas in our life that we don't fully surrender to God. Our nature is that we want to think about ourselves and we want to be the one in control. We have to intentionally go to the word and make it a priority so that we can be led by it and in turn, allow God to be in control of our lives. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. It exposes our sin and brings us to repentance. The more we read the word and study it, the more we can relate it to our daily lives, and the more we'll let go of our control and let God take the lead. So we're halfway through our video and if it's been helpful so far, then do smash that like button so more people could see it. Thank you. The next step is meditate. This modern society lacks meditation. And I'm not talking about the Eastern practice of meditation. Inner peace. Let me quote an excerpt from the book that I've been using throughout this whole series. True meditation is pondering the truth with a view of letting it help and readjust our lives. Meditation in this sense is not emptying our minds, but filling it with God's truth from the word and changing our ways to follow them. These days, instead of reflecting and meditating, the more common thing to do is 
scroll on our phones, work out, binge watch on Netflix, and get ourselves busy to earn our earthly success. Well, Joshua 1.8 says, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Did you hear that? We meditate on it day and night. And that basically means that we're to integrate scripture in our daily living. There's this Filipino favorite called pork sinigang. It's a tamarind-based soup with pork and some vegetables, which is commonly eaten with rice. One of the keys to a wonderful meal experience is tender pork. And there are two ways you can achieve that. One is through a pressure cooker. And well, that will give you tender meat for sure, but the broth won't be as good. The other way to make the pork tender is by letting the meat boil for about two hours depending on the quality of the pork. It won't just be tender, but the broth will have some creaminess and all of the ingredients will blend together to make this wonderful tasting soup that'll make your tummy happy. I had that once in a while, not every day. But you get the concept. The more love, the more time and effort that's put in making the meal, the better the taste is. And it's pretty much like our time to meditate on the word. The longer time you spend meditating on it, the more you'll enjoy and relish on what it says. Also, memorize scripture. That's something I have to work on myself, but it's another effective way to meditate on the scripture. Then we have practice. Now, this is the ultimate goal. Walk the talk. Faith in action. Practice what you preach. I don't mean to pressure you. We won't be able to apply every truth we learn right away, but for sure, there is something we can apply in every moment or every area in our lives. What is your true condition in a certain aspect of your life? What is the scripture you're studying telling you to apply? Reflect on that and take time to answer these questions. Ask God to reveal what has to be changed in your character. Know, relate, meditate, practice. As I said before, the inductive Bible study method has changed my personal Bible study and I'm excited for you to learn it too. I've mentioned this in the previous episodes that the book my teacher has been encouraging us to have is Living by the Book. Throughout this whole series, I've been giving you some tidbits of what this book says. But of course, if you have your own copy of the book, you'll be able to get all of the wisdom that this book has to share with you. So if you're interested, the link is in the description below. For more resources that I use, I have a playlist for you right here. And if you're looking for a video related to your interest, check out this one down here. We're people in the world and not of the world. Keep your eyes on Jesus. 